Markets had a strong week last week, up, up, up over 2% of the S&P. Today, the NASDAQ and S&P are down. The NASDAQ's down big, 0.76%. But big news this week, our good friend, Fed Chairman Powell, is going to be making an announcement on where rates are going to go this week, and the market is absolutely locked in on some sort of rate cut. Mo, what is the updated CME group estimates for rates this week on 0.25% cut versus 0.5% cut. So 0.25% cut is 41%. Okay. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. And a 50 basis point cut is 59%. That changed. That changed dramatically. So everybody's banking on a 50 point reduction in interest rates. Guys, we did videos wow. in the past talking about interest rates. Remember, we don't believe that interest rates in the short or in the long run are going to affect stock prices. What we believe is these are short-term reactions. We want to teach on this channel a process for buying great companies at great prices. And if short-term events cause them to go lower, then you buy more of it if you really love the company. Right, Mo? Yeah. By, now, the, by the end of the year, yeah. it's expected to be four to four and a quarter point. Right now we're at five and a quarter to five and a half. Yeah. That's 1.25% over so the So guys, quarter. I'm active on the Twitter machine. Wow. Follow me there at EM Paul G. I love talking on there. I did this poll yesterday. It's still going. 487 votes so far, Mo. That's crazy. That's a, that's a 25 basis point or 50 basis point. Or are they going to surprise with no change or, or a bigger cut? It's quite different than what the I'm surprised that no change is 10 and a half percent. I am too. I thought that would be the 1.8. And look, 22% think 0.5% cut, 65% at 0.25, and 2%, 1.8% think it'll be a bigger cut than that. It's almost, it's almost reverse of what the Fed Watch tool is sh showing. Isn't that incredible? So, guys, everybody's going to be looking at this saying, what's going on there? You know, core inflation is still 3.25%, but normal inflation, overall inflation, which includes food and energy, the volatile ones that are not included in core, is down to 2.5%. So everybody's banking on this half percent cut thinking, okay, everything's great. Let's go back to half percent. Remember, what does it mean that rates are lower? You do that to spur an economy on that's kind of faltering. Because remember, a fast growing economy is inflationary. A low unemployment rate is inflationary. Because at that point, business owners and employers have to pay more money to get good employees. I just saw Mo smile. So I'm asking, Mo, why'd you smile? So last Monday, today's Monday, last Monday, there was an 85% chance of a 25 basis point cut. It's fallen in half. Yeah. It's fallen by more by than Friday, half. Friday, it was 50-50. And now it's, what do we say, 40-60? Yeah, about 40-60. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So guys, stay tuned on this channel. If you like what you like, if you like getting news updates four or five times a week, please follow us. We're going to be responding as the cuts occur on Wednesday. As soon as there's an announcement, we're going to make a video. It'll be out within an hour of the announcement. We'll be able to break down what they're doing. But remember, buying good companies at great prices is our goal. And in the long run, if you look at history, all the things that have happened, there have been a billion things that have happened in our market. And stocks go up over the long run because fundamentals get better. Now, in the short run, can things happen? Of course they can. But you got to use short-term market fluctuations to your benefit in some fashion. Now, earnings releases this week. Mo, how boring is this? <laughs> we got Steelcase in there, so it's a big one. Ferguson, they're Ferguson's the uh, home supplier. Yeah. Like we buy a lot from Ferguson. Thursday's not bad. Darden, FedEx, Lennar. So Darden's good. Darden's the restaurant people. Uh, Miller Knoll Furniture, Lennar, uh, Lennar. FedEx. Oh, where's FedEx? Top. Oh right. yeah, top right. Mo, what do you think FedEx is going to announce? Uh, Bankruptcy? Like terrible. Hopefully. <laughs> Mo hates FedEx. Hate FedEx. If you're new to the channel, Mo hates FedEx with a passion. The worst. The worst. Um, now, guys, the market had a big week last week. I always update our stock market GDP ratio. We're at 109% overvalued. Fair value of 2692. This is based on history. This is purely math, guys. I'm not manipulating anything. I'm not giving my opinion on this. This is purely math going back to 1928. Based on history, we're 109% overvalued. Does that mean? Holy moly. What's so holy moly? That's the highest. I believe that's the highest. Yeah, that's the highest we've. That's the highest we've ever had since like 1928. Correct. Wow. Now, 10 year cyclically adjusted PE ratio, which is based on more earnings, it's 111% overvalued. Oh, it's at 36.21 versus historical average of 17.11. I assume this is our first time ever over 100%. Um, yeah, I believe so. Wow. What was now? What was 2000? Hang on. No, we were at. We were there in 2000, okay. 20, well, 2021. And let's go back to 2000 here. 
Yeah, 150%. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. 158% was the peak. 154.4. So see. guys, if you believe that, then wow. this is this is a buying opportunity of a lifetime right now. If you believe that 158% is going to be normal. Guys, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. The more you pay for it, the less your return is going to be. It's math. Now, the perceptions are different. That's what we try to focus on in this channel. We look at it and say, guys, your job is to analyze good companies, figure out an intrinsic value. And then, based on where the market price is, you're either a buyer or you're a seller or you're going to hold. It's one of those three things. Those are the three things. Not every single day, Mr. Market's going to tell you some number. The question is, do you believe that number? Remember, Meadow was dead at 88. Now it's at 515. All these companies have been dead so many times in history. News follows the stock price. And that's what we focus on in our channel. I used to believe investing with 90% math, 10% emotion. I have flipped that. If you just buy ETFs and you have a great handle on your emotions, you're going to do awesome. But if you want to pick individual stocks, which we like doing, You've got to be ready for very, very big fluctuations. Go pull up any company you want that you love. Go look at the one, two, or three-year fluctuations in price. You're telling me that stocks should fluctuate 10 or 15% on a month-to-month basis? Come on, give me a break. And a lot of these companies do that. It's the market reacting to something. The question is, is that something correct? That's the hard part. Yeah. Mo, what was, I mean, look at Apple. Apple hit a high of what? Two... 40, 40, 230, think, something. What's it at right now? Uh, 215. 215. You're telling me Apple, this huge company, the real price had, has changed 15% in the last couple months? Come on. Yeah. I mean, just today, actually, it was funny. I was looking on the Everything Money website. I always look at the top gainers and losers. Apple is in one of the top losers today. Really? Yeah, it's down 3.18%. Interesting. Who are the top gainers today? Let's go look at our Oracle, Intel, CrowdStrike, Schwab, and. APP. Oracle's up again. Yeah, Oracle's up. Yeah, Intel just sold three and a half billion dollar contract to the oh. U.S. government. That's why they're up. Nice. And, and, and Intel's up. Oh yeah, Schwab's up. Yeah. Top losers today. Micron. Micron is up there. Broadcom. So top losers today. Micron's a big one. Four percent change. A lot of stuff here. Yeah. Guys, this is this is what we enjoy doing. We have four channels now. Mo has a trading channel. I have a real estate channel. We have this 24-7 channel. We have the main channel. And we're going to do more channels than this. This channel is focused on reacting to news as it happens. 24-7, whenever it happens, we're going to react to it. We think it's material for people to actually hear about. Well, whether it's material to your investing decisions, that's completely different. But this week, with the Fed rate cut potentially probably happening, wouldn't it be awesome if Powell just said, guys, we're raising rates? I mean, they'd murder him. They would. I mean, he'd be assa- they'd stop trying to assassinate Trump and they just start they'd assassinating him. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that would be crazy. God, I hope that happens. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing that the Fed is different about. Now with the internet, the Fed used to be an independent body that nobody really liked. Like it wasn't, you know, Paul nobody Volcker. With the Fed. Nobody even paid attention to the Fed. They did, but only. Not in the sense of like, if I go to Yahoo Finance minute. right now, it's Fed, 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 Fed. Yeah. Fed Chairman Powell is. You know, on every single page, it talked about 8 billion times a day. Right. Totally different now than it used to be. Right. We need more independence for the Fed. A lot of people would argue we need to get rid of the Fed. Whatever you believe, the point is, all these decisions, we want to make sure you make the decisions based on the correct information, what we perceive to be it. Now, what you perceive it to be is going to be completely different. But every small minutia of detail is not important. There's a few things that matter in a company. There's a few things that matter in the market. People argue with me about the stock market GDP ratio all the time. Paul, that thing doesn't matter anymore because of GMP versus, I'm like, okay, it's a 1% difference. It's not that big of a difference. 10 year sickly adjusted PE ratio. That's my response. If you think that the stock market to GDP doesn't matter, the 10 year PE factors in all the earnings of the company wherever it's earned. Well, then how do you explain 111% overvalued? Unless you believe that there should be a premium to stocks now versus the past, which I do believe there should be a premium. I do believe that in the past, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, manufacturing was a big component. You just spend a lot of money to generate a lot of profit. Now you don't have to as much. But with that comes more competition. Right. Now a five-person company can become a five bill, a billion-dollar company. Right. We're going to have trillion-dollar companies at some point with less than 100 people. Yeah, and the barrier to entry is so much less. So much less. So there's you got to weigh these things in. Do I think companies deserve to be paid more of a premium because they can grow their revenue and profit much faster than the past? Absolutely. But what usually happens is we go an extreme and we go much higher than we should. So that's where we're at right now. Guys, 
Again, please do me two favors, subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter at EMPaulG. Thank you for your time.